Welcome to Home Cinema and Tech Review. In this video, I'm going to reviewing one of the smallest short throw projectors in the market. And it's from AAXA again, because they love to make probably this small projectors. SLC 450. The model number is difficult maybe for you to remember, but you're going to find the links at the description. And I reviewed the early model P7 Plus, and I was quite happy with it because it had a battery, but it was a long throw projector. So the specs were kind of like different. So the purpose of this device is different than the P7 Plus, if you're wondering. But most of the time, I hit the button. Since this is an LED, it took two or three seconds to close. So I'm going to take the power cable out and show you the details of it. In the beginning of the video, I will share with you everything that I've tested so far for this device after the test. So the conclusion is in the beginning. So you don't have to watch the entire video, but make sure you do, because I'm going to be showing you this picture quality and also built-in Android of course, the external Android that I use to give 4K videos to this sort of devices get the best picture quality and the sharpness of this device that really can be delivered through other devices as well from HDMI. So you're going to witness every kind of detail, the latency, the picture quality, the entire menu of this device and the close-up shots of AAXA SLC 450. Without further ado, let's give you my conclusion and test and uh, positioning of this device. This is a uh, first thing is first a short throw projector and it's eliminating uh, the lot of the competition out there because of its size and the short throw combination together. There are projectors out there with the long throw or regular throw ratio with portable batteries or small sizes but this thing is small when I say so. Just take a look at this. This is a true small stuff and you're going to see the close of it how small it is just take a look at it like two finger thickness and also five finger you know depth and like maybe seven finger length so this is by far one of the smallest projectors that i come across so far with the touch buttons up top and easy to use interface from android 9 and it's a simplified system so who is this projector for? And my conclusion is, basically I did the measurements for ANSI Lumen Power and you're going to see the potential uh, explanation in the picture quality section. And in the declaration they say, since this is a conclusion, I'm getting right into it. In the declaration they say 450 LED lumens and the LED lumens is um, generally divided to 2.4 to get the ANSI lumen and I've tested so far it's giving about 190 to 200 ANSI lumen in the boost mode so they are delivering uh, right exactly on the top of their declaration or just a little bit above so they're serious about their projectors I guess that's probably probably mm, one thing to mention and the P7 Plus was just like this because I've tested it again. It was just delivering what they're declaring on the paper and behind their box. So what else do we have? The declaration is good. The brightness level, considering the size is true, 200 ANSI lumen is quite good because this device is smaller from probably four times regular full HD single LED projectors in the market. So this is a four times smaller stuff that you can carry in any backpack. Whether you are going to do presentation in an office room or conference room, or you're going to use it in camping or in the caravan or when sailing, I'm going to talk all about these. Because this device is delivering 100 inch image from 1.6 meter. Let me just repeat it again, one point six meter distance 100 inch image that's a good throw ratio because this is a short throw device what that means is to be able to understand it even more 
If you have an Epson with Sonic Optoma or BenQ style bulb projectors, they are delivering around 100 inch from 3 meter roughly, 3.2. If you have an Optoma UHD35 like me, 4K long throw projector, it's about 3.5 ish, I guess. I'm talking roughly numbers, but this device gives it in a half way. So you're going to be happy if you have a small room or if you have a small place. So that creates another scenarios for this sort of small device. Let's count the scenarios. If you're traveling and making presentations to different people, this is ideal to get it packed up. And you also you can consider the P7 Plus because it has a battery instead of this, but the shorter throw ratio will give you big screens in small conference room or small meeting rooms. Or you can put it in the kids' room or small room, second room, or the bedroom project like I did early in the channel. It's quite good because you can create huge screens in the bedroom setup without worrying about the distance. And you can put it, you know, turn it upside uh, to the ceiling and watch from a ceiling huge movie. And one more thing that you can do with this sort of device. One of my lights are gone because it's getting late probably and the battery is running out. But I'm not going to stop. One of the things that you can do is also camping in a tent or in a caravan. Or if you love to sail with a boat, um, less than 9 or 8.8 .8 meter you know, boats doesn't have TVs most of the time. You can create 55 or 75 inch in a small you know, yacht. So you can use this as a sailing cinema kind of like model probably i will use this because normally if you're sailing devices has to be you know uh, protected against humidity because they can get wet or the humidity like the potential humid level on the air will hurt these devices but if you carry in your backpack when you're going to go uh, sailing you can use this device and you can rest of the day take it with you anywhere and if you're making presentations there is no better way than a small projector. So like I told you in the beginning of the video, you can go either go with the P7 Plus that I reviewed. You can check that out at the link description and you can check the AAXA's other models. They have other models too. Just I'm referring the two models that I reviewed to my understanding because I've already tested them quite a bit of detail. And in the video, in the rest of the video, you're going to witness the picture quality, close-up shots, and what this device can deliver you in a picture quality, like from YouTube, internal Android 9.0, it's built in. And also I will include my 4K Realme dongle to give YouTube 4K signal into it, at least not 4K signal, but 4K video detail. And with the amount of detail, you're going to be amazed, the sharpness, you're going to be really amazed probably the sharpness of this device, what it can deliver you. So you can use your gaming consoles connected to this, but this is not a proper gaming uh, projector for fast-paced gaming like FPS or maybe some of the racing games like fast-paced games. But basically when I, ra when I play racing games casually, like the Need for Speed, I don't look around too much of the buildings because of the response times, but most of the time I focus on the car. And if you play casual like FIFA or racing games or general third person games, you'll be happy with the results with the big screen in a very small room. So it's up to you whether you should be buying or not. But uh, some people just mentioned in my other AAXA P7 Plus video and that review, they told me that it is a pretty good projector, but it's not cheap. Let's consider the size and what it delivers. This is a short throw projector and that eliminates a lot of the competition. What you're thinking about when you think about the cheap small projectors, single LED, long throw or regular throw projectors, and they can't deliver this projector's image size in the same distance. So if you have a small space, you don't have too much of an option, do you? So that's one thing. And one more thing, this projector is small four times at least than a regular LED projector. Just put four of them this height and you're going to catch like $200, $250 level of full HD projectors. So this is four times smaller, but it's not four times more expensive.
than the cheap other projectors in the market. So where you will put this device in your head, it's going to define uh, actually, is it going to be useful for you or not? But don't focus too much of a, like other cheap products and without the same uh, image quality or optical quality with this and the same size with this because you can't put the other ones inside of a laptop bag and carry for your presentations because they are big and their adapter is also bigger than this. Just take a look at this. This is a small adapter where you can carry with your you know, laptop bag anywhere. So this is a 19 volt adapter. So you can carry these two anywhere if you need to, okay? So don't be uh, judging this device. And one more thing, this device has touch buttons up top and it's additional, something additional. If you don't have the remote with you, you can control this device easily. But others in the market, when we are talking about single LEDs, they don't have a control function. They only have power buttons. I'm not referring any brand, but 90% of them don't have buttons to manage them if you don't have the remote. So that's another plus for this projector. So considering every bit of specs that it delivers with the short throw good optical quality, it needs to be a little higher price than the others. I know this is not the cheapest projector, but keep these in mind if you're going to even think about it, to buy a full HD a small projector. Those are the things like let me give you just car example because I'm also a car lover guy. I have another car channel for my personal used cars like MX-5 and Alfa Romeo's and stuff. So Fiat Abarth 500 is a quite small car. It's a turbocharged engine small car. You can check that out. It's probably much more expensive than a regular Golf with a similar 1.4 or 5 liter turbocharged Golf. But the Golf is four-door, much bigger, they probably inside space is huge compared to Fiat Abarth, but Fiat Abarth is expensive with a similar engine, a little bit of tuned up. So it's not like that expensive compared to the Fiat 500. But basically, if you're going to have a small car, let's talk about the Toyota Yaris RS or sport version of new Toyota RS. It's a four-wheel drive small car. You can buy probably a lot of big cars for the same amount of money, but it's small, it's fast, it's compact. So that's why you're paying for small, compact, delivering big results. This is something like that. So I'm not just making this uh, so you buy it, but define your expectations with the price. I think this device delivering its quality on the price levels, quite like a price performance uh, level of unit and there is not much of a competition out there for a short throw small device like this not much of a short throws that i know basically small like this so you must be checking the aaxa's website to see the other models they have but basically if you're looking for something portable i guess this is the good one of the good options and you're going to see the results and i've tested so far and i'm happy with it i'm going to keep using it in the bedroom as a second projector at home if i want to watch movies before sleep and probably right after this video i'm going to watch a bit from this and go to sleep because it's getting late so in this video what you're going to witness is this aaxa slc 450s performance picture quality and their dongle uh, add-on 4k youtube performance and the latency and the rest of its specs and the full menu so i suggest even if you don't want to watch the entire video just leave it open in your device okay because youtube loves the long watched videos if you want to support this channel to grow and since this is my hobby i'm shooting at night passing the two o'clock at late at night so these videos are very difficult to capture and later on i have to find time to edit i'm shooting most of the time after my kids are in sleep so if you support the channel by hitting the thumbs up and you know like always give it a comment and subscribe the channel will be good for the channel's future 
And if you have any questions, just ask. When I find time, I'll try to answer with my best abilities. And would I buy my one for myself? Yes. For the short throw, definitely. For a small room, this is a quite a bit of good thing. But P7 Plus had a battery. So I'm just right in the between. If I had to buy one for traveling, P7 Plus could be the option too much. But if I want a sharper image in a small room, I don't have too much of an alternative. So I will have to go with the SLC 450. So it depends also your choice, like your room setup, if you're going to use it on a boat, camping, whatever. So hope to see you in the next video. Subscribe for more and watch until the end. Don't skip the parts. If you do, I'll know it because statistics shows everything. Until the next video, or check out. Welcome to this section of the video where we take a look at the AAXA SLC 450's picture quality. And I'm going to get dive deep into the menu and of course all the settings that you probably wonder. Like all my videos, first I begin with the picture. So right now what you're watching is 100 inch and I am right beside that huge image. And this is a palm size projector. But the most important part, this is a short throw projector and it's creating this 100 inch from 1.6 meter ish, because roughly I'm speaking, to get you understand how it's going to create huge screen from very small distance. Normally, if you got a regular throw, I'm not talking about longer throw projectors like my Optimo UHD 35, but if you're going to use some regular throw projectors with a good throw ratio, you're going to probably have the 100 inch from 3 meter and 3.2 meters. So this is half the size, roughly speaking. So that's why this is important to know. The short throw will give you like opening up new doors and new possibilities. What kind of possibilities? You can use this projector in a small kid's room. You can use this projector in a bedroom where you can place this very close to the wall or wardrobe, white wardrobe. You can create 100 inch from very small distance. One more scenario is you can put this projector right onto the bed with a small tripod and facing it upwards to the ceiling and you can create 100 120 inch screen because if you have like three meter you know three 330 height of this is kind of like roughly uh, general height of uh, if you're living in a flat uh, so let's just say the bed is uh, 70 centimeters 50 to 70 centimeters higher from the ground up. So you're going to have like, if you have 330, that means you got 2.6 meters, which means right now we are creating 100 inch from 1.6 meters. You can definitely create, even if you have three meter height and let's just lose the 70, 2.3 meters, you can create 120, 130 inch of huge image. And you can change the size, of course, with a tripod to get it a little higher if you really want to. Those are the advantages. So what other scenarios you can possibly use this? You can use this projector on camping because shorter throw ratio will give you to be able to use this inside of a tent or inside of a caravan. Or you can use this projector inside of a motorboat like if you have a small yacht, uh, motor boats less than nine meters most of the time doesn't have TVs. Or if you're not, if you're an enthusiast, you can install stuff. But to be able to use it in the sea, it needs to have waterproof or some sort of humidity protection. So to be able to apply TVs and electronics long term, leaving them on the boat on the sea that's kind of like difficult so instead of that you can use this projector inside of a boat at late night when you cruise when you stop you can watch movies enjoy movies with this projector so there are a lot more scenarios that you can imagine in a small room situation so if you have a teenager room like a small room you can definitely use this projector so the scenarios of the short throw is quite a bit of advantageous and com considering the price of this device and the size of this device, 
including being short throw and LED with a long life, that's kind of like a very good uh, price to performance ratio. And I'm going to talk about the specs while I talk about it. You're going to see the results. Like always, I measured the brightness with my brightness measurement tool. And if you haven't watched my other videos, we're going to take a look at the ansi lumen real power of this projector's power. This projector has three modes. One is bright, one is normal, and one is kind of like a low or echo mode. In the highest mode, it gives around 190 plus to 200 ANSI lumens. In the normal mode, 160, 170 ANSI lumens. And in the low mode, 145 to 155. So that means you're going to have up top around 200 ANSI lumen power, like 190 to 200. It is a real power, ANSI lumen power. So this is a dark room, quite a bit of good projector. Right now we are watching 100 inch full HD image with internal Android. So considering every spec, we have to respect this device uh, with the price range. And it's very small. The importance of the small size is also another thing of this projector. Let's change the uh, video to Mother Earth, at least uh, to be able to show you the varieties of this device. So in my mind, I'm trying to gather the information. Why would anyone choose something like this? If you need a presentation, okay, if you don't want to mess up uh, to carry big stuff, or if you don't have a dedicated, not every company, if you have a small company, or if you're visiting a company, you don't know if they have a dedicated meeting room or a big meeting room or not. But this device, will make you be able to use in any small environment and create a very good presentation like huge sizes just like this so and of course the adapter is so small you can carry it anywhere inside of a backpack that's one of the advantages of this device so let's get closer to dive deep into the menu of this device i'm going to take the camera with the tripod and try to adjust it on live. I'm not going to do anything extra, okay? Right now, you're very close to the 100 inch size of image. And I believe right now you're seeing a little bit more. So again, I'm going to just stand right beside it to show you how big this 100 inch is. When you look at me, you understand the size because from a distance, you can't understand it. Let's face it, 100 inch image is 77% bigger than 75 inch TV. So it's, there's no comparison to the regular TV size. And it's bigger than what you think, if you're thinking always TV sizes. So let's go to the menu, okay? Remote control in the menu is quite easy. Let's go back to the menu and try to show you stuff. Yes, this is the main menu. When the menu is on, when you hit the in the middle section, one single button, there is a left uh, menu window opens and we can change the brightness from boost mode to standard mode and the echo mode. Between them, of course, there is a brightness difference and boost mode is obvious. Like I told you, ANSI lumen power is around from 190 to 200 to uh, boost mode goes to 160, 65 into the normal mode and the low mode or echo mode is 155. So they are quite close, but the boost mode is definitely giving you a good amount of difference and you're going to see it because the camera is tuned to fixed exposure. So if it's overexposing, I will change the setting of it while I move around the menu. And for that, I need to look. It's kind of like OK exposure from the camera settings. So what else do we have when we hit the menu button? We have image mode. Image mode says standard, light, soft, and personal. And when you do it, it changes stuff, of course. So when you go back, the color temperature, normal, warm, personal. When we go personal, we can adjust red, green, blue. That's 
something good to have. If you have a colored, little bit of uh, colored uh, painted wall and stuff. The sound mode, we have music, movie, personal. And if we hit personal, we can change the hertz levels uh, to our taste. But for me, this device has a small speaker that you're going to see the specs on the screen. It's okay to use it in a demonstration, like presentation and stuff. But for the movie purposes, you need to use the ear ear uh, plug or like 3.5 uh, jack or the Bluetooth for ideal reasons, getting the best sound out of it. And the surround sound is off and on. We have the menu. But again, like I told you, you got option, but the speaker is not huge. The shutdown timer is a good thing. This can be used in the bedroom, like I told you. And the settings of projector is zoom in and out. Right now it's 100%. I will show you that. And the corner correction, it's easy. We can reach this menu in a different menu. So I will get into that. So the main menu is streaming service. If you hit that, streaming services is going to be online. YouTube, Netflix, Prime, HBO, Disney, and Hulu. So we got built-in Android and built-in enough of app that we, if in any case, like you're going to use a streaming services. So we got files. If you have a USB thumb drive, USB hard drive, you can stick it up and play the movies. Again, this is a full HD Android experience in a palm size. So if you want to carry your movies in camping and stuff, you can do it with no problem. We got two inputs. It's not like the P7 Plus the earlier. It had like HDMI and also Type-C connection and also USB. This one has uh, SLC uh, 450 has HDMI and USB only. That's more than enough because we also have streaming and fully Android in case we need it. So in the mirroring, we have two options, Android and IO, uh, iOS, iOS. Uh, I'm not an Apple guy, so I will go for the Android. But main issue is you might be thinking, hey, I need to choose something to cast. It's not like a TV. Yes, it is, but it's quite easy. You choose it and you go forward. I'm not going to show you every bit of step because the videos are getting longer and you guys are hating it. Wi-Fi setup is easy. When Once you choose the Wi-Fi, even if you're casting from your smartphone, it doesn't matter. You put the password and you're okay. The office is here. Like I told you in the other sections of this video, it's a presentation ready device. So you can open up the office files and documents from local documents or projection guide. It's here. So it's good to have your presentation built in from USB thumb drive to this Android supported device. And you can add apps later on. Since this is an Android, you can apply different Office apps to use with it. It's not going to be a PC performer, alt performer, but it's, it will get the job done. And you can carry this device anywhere with, at your backpack if you're going to present something from your laptop too. So we got internal browser that's going to be showing up itself like a google and i'm going back we got apps and we got settings so before uh, the going deep down uh, deep uh, depths of the menu uh, settings i will go to the apps let's take a look browser android mirroring we already saw that youtube bluetooth speaker mode settings multimedia player we know from the usb drive app store if you want to install something vps projector and Prime Video, Disney, Airscreen, Netflix, Hulu, HBO, and the streaming services. So these are the apps that are coming with it, but you can install App Store and you can probably install like uh, every Android device from external source. If you download the APK files, if you are into something like, you know, uh, other media players like Plex and stuff into the network, you can probably try that out. But for now, we are good to go. And I'm going to go to the settings. It doesn't matter. You can go it from uh, the main menu or something like this directly. Let's go back and do that action. Again, I can come here, hit the settings. Again, same menu. We already know the brightness, uh, brightness settings. We got three options. That's normal. And I showed it to you. And the wireless is same. The advanced, let's take a look at in advanced. Boost, 
uh, boot signal input, which is kind of like a good thing if you're going to boot this device and you want it to be like showing from a source, you can go HDMI, USB. It's going to do it automatically. So right now it's off. Boot app, you can choose any app in the boot. That's normal if you want to. That's something that you have. Power mode, we got standby, power on, power on, on standby. We got two options. And key tone. Key tone is off and on. We can change it. And screen saver, five minutes. It's something good to have. It shows some sort of pictures, like just like TV models these days. Screen saver, timeout, shutdown, and HDMI control. We can do it like the HDMI control, device auto power off, TV auto power on, kind of like source giving the signal. If you close the source, this device also goes down if you really want to, like a gaming console and stuff. When you close your console, this will probably go down. Restore factor settings. I think this is the other settings section or advanced. In the language, since the Android has near every language, let's hit the button. And we can take a look at huge amount of choices that we have. You can probably find your language. Input system. Here is Android keyboard AOS, uh, AOSP. Keyboard settings that we can choose. Language, preferences, appearance, layout, gesture, text, correction, and advanced. If you want to that sort of thing. But this is an Android. You can probably install something like APK. And display, which is one of the most important parts. Front table. This section is generally used for a lot of projectors. Front table, back table, and, you know, top down, like a ceiling mount. And again, reverse of that. And then we are again, front table, regular projection angle, right on from a table. Zoom in and out. As you can see, I can go down and it's shrinking quite a bit of much in the 50%. We got two weeks zoom. If you need to use like a TV setup, if you don't want to move it, you can put it on somewhere like a bookshelf and stuff. And you can, you know, get the size a little bit down if you don't have the options. Like I told you, if you do it, uh, put it on a bed and uh, return it to the, turn it to the ceiling and create a huge image. For the bad distance choice, you can shrink the image down and watch it like a 75 to 85, depending on your distance, what your eyes can handle. So keystone correction is right now auto, manual, we got here. When we say auto, we got vertical and horizontal corrections. We got four corner keystone, but I'm going to show the vertical how it performs. This is going vertical like this, 50%. And we're going to go 50% back. Reason that I'm showing this is you might need it and you want to know how much you can go. But I made a dedicated video why you should be project always straight as possible because every kind of digital skewing will ruin your image. And I explained it in a quite a bit of detail. So I'm going to show you horizontal correction and the image is skewed. So the pixelization is happening if you have to skewed image something like this like huge uh, i suggest don't but if you don't have any other choice then you might want to have this option so we got four corner keystone let me just show you one corner to be a precise example let's go down how much it can go again it's going quite a bit still going and i'm holding yes but by the way, while I do it, like chromatic aberration style distortion around the picture is increasing. So this is digitally skewing and you're seeing how much I can go. That's crazy. I'm still going. So I just want you to see this. I know this is taking too much of time, but I don't think there is a limit. So I'm going to go back. It's going to take a little bit of time. Sorry to do so. But still, we need to do this to show you. So you can match. Probably, let's hit the reset button to make things clear. Okay, that's faster. So I reset it and we are done. Keystone correction reset is also an option. So we did it too. So we got Bluetooth choices. If you have a Bluetooth speaker, you can open it up. When you open up the Bluetooth, let's see what it sees. 
at yes epson ls300 my uh, also projector acts like a speaker if you haven't watched my other videos so i can connect it to my other speakers as well if i open the bluetooth speaker choices that i have at home backup and reset and it's a choice and the about shows the version model slc 450 android version is 9 1 gigabyte to 8 gigabyte so this is not a beast of android but it works quite a bit of past because i believe they made kind of like a, a lighter version of the android that's why the system works as fast as it can with the hardware and it works well so you don't feel a kind of like big lags when you go from left to right but interface is not shiny as the media player devices this is a portable device that's giving you everything so i like it it's good enough i think the menu section is covered probably i'm going to show you some of the 4k examples by that i mean i'm going to put my 4k dongle connected to it and show you the best picture quality but before that I want to give you some sort of example from YouTube as a gameplay footage because you might want to consider this device as a casual gamer, okay? It's an option. It's not a gaming projector with the latency, but in case if you're going to wonder if I buy something like this, can I gameplay with it? Let's go from YouTube for the Horizon 5 PC gameplay. Okay. There's a commercial. Let's go back. And when we go in, probably the commercial will pass. Again, any other commercial comes in. So, okay, we can skip this. I'm going to go a little bit forward. And this is a 100 inch image. And I need to adjust the bitrate of it. Let's see. Right now it's full HD. But I don't think it's just getting to the full HD specs. It's a capture of a game, so it's not. I know this capture is good. So I'm going to play you same video with the 4K Android dongle and give you the 4K video, okay? Because it just improves. I'm going to make a dedicated video about this. Just wait a while. And as you can see, this is a quite a bit of good picture. And you're going to watch it. And I'm going to add the dongle and show you by pixel by pixel kind of like style. But just want to show you this part of the video. Just go a little bit forward. Overall, the contrast and general feeling of it is quite good. And I'm going to do something interesting. Right now, this is 100 inch and I'm going to put the projector forward to decrease the size, but increase the brightness. If I put it something like this, around something like this, this is 75 to 80 inch size, okay? Let me just go back. The brightness is increased, of course. And I'm going to go I'm going to go uh, 8K again. video again we got 8k ultra hd videos okay we got to choose something let's choose this one this is real hdr and yep and I'm going to adjust the focus because this is a manual focus. And I love about it because the, you can be precise with the manual focus. And it's about it. Right now, I got 85 to 90 inch of image and it's pretty bright. But just get close to the image and show myself how big still this is. This is pretty still big. So if you're going to use it on camping, on boat, on traveling, or a small room as a presentation, there is no way that you will regret this around 85 or 75 inch. Let me just go a little forward. This is about 
75 inch. I need to refocus maybe, but still this is a quite sharp image and the brightness is getting even better. So you might be seeing this overexposed and not detailed enough in some places because the camera is fixed uh, set up to show you the picture quality. And you can go back. If I go back, this place will be filled with screen. Let's go back. Can it be used? Okay, right now it's about 100 inch, like I showed you earlier, okay? And I'm going to take the camera back. If you don't know the room setup, you can go back and check the room setup. And right now you are seeing my up top lights. This is a dining table and I'm going to Take a look at the electricity and take it from here onto the table. And I'm going to take this projector back. Right now it's working and I need to probably readjust it. Okay, let me just find the focus. And I think it's pretty good image considering this device's size, but you need a dark room, definitely. For this sort of size, you need a dark room, but you can clearly watch this in the boosted mode, in this size. But ideally, I don't recommend above 100 inch. This is probably 115 to 100 and, yeah, 15 plus, not 125, 115 to 120 ish size. But this is huge. This is four times of a 65 inch TV. This is huge. I think the ideal part is something like this again. This is 100 inch and it's in the dark room. Quite a bit of ideal size. Let me just go back and show myself again. I'm putting my hands up. So this is how big this screen is. So this is a pretty big screen. So I hope this section has gave you enough ideas and you're going to see the physical close-up shots and technical details all around the video and you heard a lot of things that i've said over the time course of this section i hope this video gave you enough information before going to the next video try to give a thumbs up hit the like button say hi in the comments and my conclusion will be in the beginning of the video. If you just skip the video, kind of like in the sections, conclusions are in the beginnings. I tell everything at the beginning because uh, if you're just going to, you know, straight to the end and the conclusion part, you might skip that part up if you are a newbie in the channel. But the overall contrast, picture quality, size, throw ratio, everything it will make you happy about this project. And the only downsides that I can't count. Uh, there's a fan noise because there are three small fans in it. The size is too small, so they can't probably put a big fan in it. There needs to be some sort of cool, cooling solutions and you can beat it, that fan noise opening up the volume and going the echo mode or uh, the low power mode doesn't change the fan noise too much. You're going to hear it anyway. But for me, for the scenario of this device, the design and the, probably the concept of, of this device is not going to create a problem for this because if you're going to watch a movie with this, you're going to connect to a Bluetooth speaker or some sort of headphone or earbuds. Whatever you do, you're not going to hear the fan noise. And if you're going to watch the 100 inch, since this is a short throw, okay, and you're going to watch 100 inch, this will throw the a picture just like this from 1.6 meters and you'll be probably sitting around 3 meters so you'll be away from this device from 1.5 to let's just say 2 meter distance and the noise will not be effective as like a longer throw regular 200 250 dollar range projectors because they are long throw and you need to be stay close to them if they have less audio even if have they uh, if they had a less audio as a fan noise, you're going to sit pretty close. But for this, you're going to stay away. But still, there's a hearable fan noise. And I'm not going to show you the uh, 
audio level. If you really wonder that sort of stuff, just ask at the comment section in the upcoming videos. I might I might add that prob uh, that test to the device. So I'm going to skip the video again. Sorry about the commercials, and we are done. This section is over. Hope to see you in the next video. Don't skip any parts. Watch until the end. In this section of the video, I just want to show you with an external 4K dongle what this device can deliver because of the sharp optical sharpness quality. Because most of the time, building Android uh, units are not going to be, you know, externally best possible dongle or box like Nvidia Shield kind of or your console kind of like level. So what I'm doing here. I'm giving it 4K HDR video, but the device is full HD. Don't get me wrong. My dongle is right now working the, in the menu full HD, but giving the 4K video. Let's go back. This is the sharpness. Just picture this. You can stop and go back and forth to check it. I will hit the menu button and again go back to the same stage with the internal. Focus on the sharpness, you can go back and forth. And let me just hit this again. With from the menu, I come to the app. Again, like I told you, you can go back and forth. I'm going to play the same video from the internals and start hit start button. Yep. And it's going to play full HD. Okay. Again, the signal is full HD right now. This is the result. This part is obviously much sharper. And believe me, you can go back and forth. And if in the editing, if it's possible, I will stop it and crop a section. I will put it right beside so you can compare the picture sharpness with two different videos. And I'd like to go back again because definitely this part is quite a bit of extremely soft compared to the 4K dongle. So we are giving more data from our video and I will make a dedicated video about this. Don't get me wrong, the internal is enough. I'm just trying to show you the sharpness of the optical quality. And basically, the overall picture quality can be achieved from this device is quite a lot. And if you have like a Xbox or PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X like me, you can connect and get a pretty sharp image. Uh, you guys are mostly focusing on Full HD 4K, but if it's a good optic that can deliver good picture quality like this, you won't be regretting the Full HD choice. And we are right now around 100 and inch and plus sizes and let me just go back to the dongle in case i can't edit it later on hit it two times and hit back and i need to change the screen to input and my input is HDMI again around this area sharpness is extreme around the eyes again extreme difference I'm going to play this 4k a little bit while a little while let's sorry by the way you are seeing the channel 8k paradise is most of the time the channel that I use Okay, I'm going to hit play. Take a look at this. Right now we are giving 4K signal and seeing every bit of fur or hair of the animal and the sharpness is quite good. So I haven't added a digital sharpness. You can see clearly giving a good signal creates huge difference. So if you connect your laptop, if you connect your console, if you connect your own source, you're going to get the best. But internals is way more enough than this device's purpose. 
I hope this part gave you enough information. Welcome to the last section of the video. In this part, I'd like you to sh see that uh, in the bedroom setup, can it be used? The AAXA SLC 450 is roughly 200 ansi lumen projector, powerful projector. So this is pretty good for a dark room setup like a bedroom. So would you want to be using this as a casual device? And to show you that, Right now, the image size is around 100 inch. Like right now, it's about 90 probably, but you can clearly make it just a bit of 50 centimeters. Roughly speaking, you can create 110 inch or between 110 to 120, quite a bit of extreme size screens considering the bedroom setup. So basically 100 inch ish, this size is huge. And when the lights are on in the scene, room gets pretty bright. So it's more than enough. Let's start our test and i'm going to talk about it since you have seen probably the latency part of the video if you haven't skipped any parts what it means is this is a 120 ish millisecond uh, latency projector and i i know some might say that at least if you're a gamer 30 milliseconds can be acceptable for casual 60 milliseconds and below might be acceptable for a lot of games and so why am I talking about gaming? I know it's not exactly suiting for the setup, but let me just get back a bit and show you my point. My point is, if you're a casual gamer, okay, right now we are driving a car. Take a look at the car, not the around, like left and right, because car is fixed. I'm going to try to get on the road Sorry about the dark scenes, by the way, this is night time. And so some might ask, do I feel the latency? Yes, I do. And this is too close for me. I need to get back. This is a huge screen. It's very difficult to understand where I am. When I turn around with action based, like hand braking, I do understand the latency. Okay. So I need to go back a little bit. And under the light, just want to show you the car. And I'm going to hit the gas. Just focus your eyes in the middle. And I'm giving the gas. Because car, car is static camera angle. So if you focus your eyes onto the car, you won't feel that much of a latency. But when you move around, okay, let me just give it a handbrake here. You feel every kind of... Uh, shape shifting or blur effect or latency jagged effect or choppiness it's difficult to explain but if you have used the game a laptop gaming monitor or gaming tv like mine with a low latency you wouldn't be having that so 
What that means is basically you can play racing games, but you have to accept that reality. Maybe I will make another video, a whole tutorial about it. How much milliseconds affects how much with the different projector examples. I might be shooting that video at 60p, maybe even higher, 120p level of... F. Maybe I can shoot it 4K, 120p, and show you exactly what happens with the slow motion setup the difference between levels of blur and latency can affect but from my point of view and everybody probably will agree if you have around uh, 60 milliseconds that's okay for most of the games and for the third person style tom raider style games or assassin's creed style games it's acceptable and 30 milliseconds acceptable i am using my epson which is probably i haven't tested it but i'm sure it's about 30 to 50 range because many of the cinema projectors even with the bulb ones if it's not a gaming custom projector it's around 30 milliseconds range roughly so i've used optomo uhd 35 it was a 4k gaming projector and when in the full hd it was delivering one uh, four milliseconds and 240 hertz so i know how it feels like uh, using a good projector for gaming with the dlp setups that i uh, I have early, I had early, and I still had, uh, I am still having that projector at the office. I'm not giving it away, but basically, this can be easily usable for a gaming setup like this, casual gaming. Watch this, okay? By the way, if you're wondering, the game, this is called Grow Force. And I'm kind of like, I guess, died. Yeah. A lot of action happening in the same time. So if you like those sort of, that sort of pixel-based games, you're good to go. So what else can we do? Of course, we can play video and I will show you video again because I've showed you the same video. And I'm going to show it again in this setup, whether it is usable or not again. I know videos are getting longer, but basically I'm just trying to show you as much as possible. I can play the same video with a 4K resolution, get back. This is Xbox Series X and this is 4K video from Xbox Series X to the AAXA SLC 450 and I'm going to get it larger, okay? Just bear with me. This is about 110 to 20 inches and I think it's sharp enough. But basically it is full HD and I'm sitting too close. I wouldn't recommend about 100 inch for most of the full HD projectors, unless it's a cinema style, highest end projector about like 4K prices. So definitely this projector is quite good to use in the bedroom setup, in the bedroom cinema, casual use, all around use. For the price and the size it has, and let me just get close to create a smaller screen with a much brighter setup. This is about 75, inch screen and it's kind of like where I want to be in the bedroom I need to focus again yep focus is there and I'm going to cancel the sound so the brightness is increasing quite a lot this is about 75 inch ish and more than enough for a bedroom setup without a tv so if you increase decrease the size the brightness increase huge contrast also again without too much of a lost light increases and also contrast since this is an led with the good optics contrast is good considering the price and size and everything so let me know what you think at the comment section below i just want you to see can it be usable for a bedroom setup yes it can and 
if you have a smaller console instead of my Xbox Series X, you might want to go for Xbox Series S for smaller compact design, and it will be more compact to play, place around anywhere quite easily. I hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you in the next video.